Merry Christmas, friends. I'm so excited to bring you this project. I loved doing it. It was so much fun. I have figured out how to print big images on just normal copy paper coming out of my printer at home. And when I say tiled, I'm going to show you how you can set it in Microsoft Word when you print, there's a way to set it so that it does it for you. It prints it out so that you can match it up like puzzle pieces. Now you see this beautiful vintage print that um, it says 1898 on the back, but I paid half of that because it came from the warehouse thrift store in Boaz, the Amazon Hope thrift store. And I love this so much that I want to be able to use it immediately after Christmas. So I'm just going to pull that one panel out and keep it with this frame. But look, it's just magically the exact size of a styrofoam piece of poster board, except it's a little shorter than the poster board. So I am marking with a pencil that exact print on cardboard, you know, the original print, and now I'm taking a metal ruler and my, you know, you could use an X-Acto knife, you could use a box cutter, and listen, I'm only cutting the top layer and a little bit of the styrofoam that's in between, because you know these styrofoam poster boards are like a normal poster paper, styrofoam in between, and then another normal poster paper. So. I didn't hurt my table. I promise I didn't. Although I don't know how it could maybe be hurt any worse than that. Okay. You may have to run back a few times to follow the steps. But when you are in your document and you want to select print, look at this printer properties. That's what you want to click on. And where it says one-sided printing, click right there and it's going to show you all these options and what I did to make mine the size that it is I chose the three by three which means three papers going across and three papers going down and I did have it on landscape orientation so when it prints it just prints it out with the teeny tiny little narrow margin because I did when I was setting up my Word document I did choose narrow margins and now in to make it um, to make it as seamless as possible what I'm doing is I'm cutting off that white edge because you know my printer doesn't print to the edge most printers don't I mean you have to get up into professional printing to find printers that will print all the way to the edge of your document so this lovely little sliding cutter that is available at Walmart or Amazon or Hobby Lobby, anywhere you might happen to be, just place it and cut it off just exactly so that the printed edge is as, is as close to that cut as possible because what I want to do is make each edge kiss the next tile. I don't want it to overlap because I feel like it would show more overlapping than if it were just kissing, just barely meeting together and touching. So I am cutting everywhere there's a little narrow white edge. I am lining that up gently and trying to make sure it's as square as possible because it will make it much easier the more time that you take with it will make it much easier as you go ahead and I'm not worrying about cutting off the excess around the outer perimeter because I'm going to leave that hanging off the poster board until I'm all done now here is an image that if you wanted to copy you could but don't try sending it to Staples because they'll argue with you that it is copyrighted because it's got the little blurb under there that says Courier Knives, although I looked up the copyright law and if it's after 1928 or before 1928, it's supposed to not have that copyright law. 
Okay, I'm pointing out to you that I'm not trimming on the outer framed perimeter yet. I'm just trimming off the white. I really don't think, so I printed it at home. This is why I was only going to do like an 11 by 17 size till I realized that I would could print it at home and make it pretty, pretty big, like poster size, or I think you could make it even bigger than that if you choose like more, you know, more tiles. I, I chose three by three, but I think it goes on up to four by four. That would be even bigger. So what I'm doing now is trying to determine where the center of my poster is and where the edges of my image are going to land because I want it to be, you know, centered in the space that I have. So I played with it a little while after I got all the edges trimmed off so that I could see if they meet and they, they do meet. And I realized that um, I could use that t teeny tiny print on the bottom of that of that center bottom tile. I could use that to help align it with the edge of the poster paper. I could see through my paper and I thought that would be a good way to make sure that I was getting it straight. Now what I, I may not have finished my sentence, you know I do that all the time and I don't mean to. Uh, it's because my mind is running in about four lanes at once. Um, what I'm saying is, I don't think you would be in trouble for printing it out at home and using it in your home. You're not trying to make a profit from it. If someone else knows a lot about this copyright issue kind of thing, please make a comment in the comment section and let me know because, you know, I, I don't I don't want to argue with the people at Staples. I don't want to, uh, you know, and they, don't, they just have the policies they need to go by. And I understand that too. But I just, I don't think that there's any kind of restriction against being able to do this for your own enjoyment in your own home. You're not going to sell it. You're not going to do anything to make it, you know, to make it be a copyright infringement if there was one. But I just don't think there is. I think the people at, Cop at Staples might possibly be mistaken about it. But... You know they're the professionals and I'm not so I do trim off underneath the little printed part the little tiny print that tells that it is a courier knives print but you know all the all the beautiful graphics that are out there you know this is not the only thing and it doesn't have to be a Christmas thing you can do any kind of vintage image or any kind of image whatsoever that you would want to do Oh, I, I saw that I skipped trimming off the white narrow edge on that one, on that one piece. Okay, now to affix my paper to my poster board, I'm using a glue stick, and this is not even expensive glue stick. These were eight for a dollar twenty-five at the Dollar Tree. So the reason I like to use a glue stick on some projects like this is because. It doesn't soak your paper to where it's wet and it wants to wrinkle up. I did think that I was going to go find my little wooden brayer, which is like a little wooden rolling thing that you can smooth it way out, but I really didn't even need to. Um, <laughs> I fooled around with a, a few different ways. Now here I am double checking to make sure that my image is going to be in the center of my poster board and I thought okay what I'll do look at that taking the cap off with one hand flicked it off with my thumb I was like okay I'm just gonna stick it down just a little bit and um, make sure that I, I like the position of it left and right because you know when you're using the glue stick you do have opportunity to you can <laughs> You can adjust it just for you know a few seconds up to maybe a minute or two you can still pull it away and stick it back down again in a better place if you decide it needs to be so here i am just putting a little dot right there but it wasn't enough i should have put a bigger dot <laughs> but you know none of this is actually you know rocket science it's it's not like there's this is the only way that you can do something this is just the way that I did it. And in case 
anyone has not tried it before. And if you're like me, I feel a lot braver about trying something for the first time. If I have watched someone else do it or explain to me uh, how they did it and how they uh, figured out from trial and error what was the best way to do. And, you know, it just gives me a little more confidence. Just like I'm about to have to watch a video on how to make Muddy Buddies because uh, tomorrow I will be going to my mother's house and I, I signed up for Muddy Buddies and I'm not super sure how I did it. Um, I mean, how to make it, so I'm going to have to look it up. Okay, did you see where you could choose under the picture selection? It says corrections. And if you wanted to, now I didn't, I, I ended up using my image just as is, but there's all different sorts of shades and different things. And if, if you need to, you're going to want to rewind and, and go back and, and freeze frame maybe on those um, pictures of my computer my computer screen so that you can see what I'm talking about that if you needed to tint it a whole different color you could do that which I just wanted mine black and white I just wanted it to look uh, very very simple and then I aged it by hand a little bit I'll, I'll, when I get to that part you'll be surprised how I do it okay now here's where I realized I should have put a bigger blob of glue stick so that I could piece it all together. I think what I was trying to do is trying to put everything in its right position before I actually s totally glued it down. And listen, um, it was important to me, and see that thing still won't stick. I'm about to get irritated at it. Okay, we're fixing to do it, do it big time now. <laughs> Okay, so stick down, dadgummit. Um, you do need to put glue stick under every little square millimeter of between the paper and the poster board because the, the more solidly that you're putting down that glue stick, the more hmm, smoothly that it's going to stick in between. And even so... I did get a slight little wrinkle here and there, but I didn't care because this is meant to look vintage. And um, I've decided vintage and distressed is my best option for crafting because it's very forgiving when I, you know, I'm a fast crafter. I don't, I don't want to go super, super slow on anything. So, um, you know, those of us who like to go fast... <laughs> We're likely to make some mistakes and we're likely to uh, take advantage of the fact that it's going to be chippy and distressed and maybe a little wrinkled and maybe a little damaged looking. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm looking at. Oh, I know. Sometimes I look at the camera to make sure that I'm still in frame so that uh, it's recording because uh, it's ever so irritating to do a big... <laughs> lengthy section of a project and to realize that it's not even being captured on the frame so I was making sure that I was on there and I am so now you can see that I you know am doing everything I can to get it solidly matched together and now I'm finally ready to try it into my frame and um, the staples that were holding the print in just do yourself a favor and bend those things as far straight up as you can, as it will allow you to do, so that you don't have to struggle and dig and gouge around to make <laughs> your poster go under the staples. Uh, the, the original lithograph over there is on a thinner piece of cardboard, and then they had this bizarre... Um, I don't even know what that was for. Bizarre nail sticking there, but I just left it there because it is at the bottom. And I thought, well, that'll help keep everything all together and in place. Ta-da! And it does look really good, just plain black and white. That, it would have been fine. I could have just left it at that and not done another thing to it. But you know, 
I can't leave well enough alone. And here I am try, trying to bend these little staples all around back into place. Now that I finally did get all of the staples standing straight up, you know, it didn't slide under there because it's thicker than the cardboard, the original cardboard. Okay, now we're all ready. Here's something I'm going to do to help it look as seamless as possible. I'm just taking a regular pencil and I'm going in and coloring any place that I can see the white edge because try, try as I may, I did not exactly get it trimmed off so that there was no white edge showing but you can see just teensy bits and like in a spot like that that curved thing i just went ahead and drew the there might have been a little a little corner or a um an uneven spot on that round curve and i ran the pencil around what the curve should have looked like so that it wouldn't look like it's been pieced you know, that's the that's the object. You we want it to look like it's all one original piece, and it's pretty close. I mean, if you're standing uh, maybe ten inches from it, you're going to be able to see. Okay, look at my junky makeup bag. <laughs> I have found. Um, a, I don't know. I've never heard of anybody else doing this, but you know, I didn't. I don't have the pastel chalks in the colors so I just thought hey I wonder if some brownish tone eyeshadow <laughs> it's pretty highly pigmented so I just thought what if I were to go around the edges and make this look aged with my eyeshadow so that's what I did and at first I was just going to go in the corners and then it was pretty fun and I decided that hmm, maybe I will and that's actually um, some sort of eyeshadow blending brush that I don't actually use I use a, I have a different one that's more favorite to me. So I'm just using, I could have used a paintbrush. But uh, since I was using it straight out of my eyeshadow palette, I decided I would just use the eyeshadow brush as well. And I could, I was just going to go around the edges. And then it got to be really, uh, it was a very relaxing and enjoyable little step to this process. So I did go around all the edges and... I ended up going inside the tops and bottoms just just like the caps or the um, the serif I'm a I'm a graphics artist and I've worked at newspapers and when you say serif in sans serif that just means a sans sans means without serif means the little lines at the tops and bottoms of your capital letters and your lowercase as well uppercase and lowercase so I did go in and highlight my serifs but look this was just okay this was fun to me because I felt uh, artistic doing it it felt it felt fun to do and I was getting tickled at myself I was like nobody that sees this picture is ever going to know that it has eyeshadow on <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I got to thinking, you could probably use like um, cocoa, like Hershey's cocoa out of the can. You could probably use that. Um, and obviously the chalk pastels. Um, I've never owned a set of those, but I've always thought they looked very interesting. Um, that would have been appropriate to use. But, you know, uh, I told you I'm an impatient crafter and I certainly was not going to wait till I went all the way to a store to buy something that was intended for this use. I was like, surely I've got something that will work. And surely it did. I do love the beautiful details in that illustration. I love all the little, do you see all the little holly and berries? There's actually even acorns and, um, blackberry looking things well there it is in my home and I can't see where it is pieced together until I am less than a foot from it I really can't of course I don't have the greatest eyesight but I think most people would imagine or just assume that that's all one piece together and I did <laughs> I did age it up and take a perfectly good black and white image and uh, make it look like it has been pulled out of a barn loft somewhere. 
which is exactly how I like my things to look. That's very interesting to me. And uh, yes, it is uh, less Christmassy and more of just my regular greenery. Because I had the flu and I was in the bed for over two weeks, right, right after Thanksgiving, I, I did my pretty little trees there. And I will try to do a little home tour. I love all of you. I hope you're having a great Christmas.